Well, it is time to attempt to start Bugs from Work episode four the second time. I brought a bug home last night and it got away. It was a super fast, like the Usain Bolt of spiders, and I didn't get a single shot off before it vanished. Uh, but today I have captured a really cool looking jumping spider, definitely the coolest looking jumping spider that I've captured so far. And uh, the first one that we photographed in back in episode one, I nicknamed Philadelphia. And Heather has decided that we're going to call this one Pittsburgh. So uh, I'm going to try to get Pittsburgh out of the container and uh, let him go in the product studio and see if I can get a shot. He's uh, furry and lighter colored. So uh, and anybody has real dark eyes. So hopefully that's going to turn out good. Here we go. Look at him. He's so cute, you guys. Oh yeah, this is definitely the jumping spider I've been waiting for right here. Where'd you go, you little, you little guy? I've got the extension tubes on this time. He was giving me kind of a standard jumping spider threat display. All right, there is Pittsburgh. What a absolutely beautiful jumping spider Pittsburgh turned out to be. Hopefully one of the viewers will know what species of jumping spider this is and maybe even whether or not it's a male or a female, but I've always wanted to catch this particular variety, a jumping spider that has light colored woolly fur and the little um, black tufts of fur on top of its head that poke up in little groups. I think you can see it better in the next picture. Yes, see those groups of fur that poke up the dark ones above its head. I think those are really cool looking and photogenic and here is Pittsburgh as it's doing kind of a threat display or poking one of its front legs up. Just an amazingly photogenic spider and I was so happy to have captured it and brought it home, made some photographs of it, and then released it into the backyard unharmed. Very cool. Look, here it is uh, riding low, kind of flattened out with all of its legs almost straight out. Thanks for the photo shoot, Pittsburgh. I must say that Pittsburgh, the spider that Heather has nicknamed Pittsburgh, is definitely the most attractive micro photography subject so far. Uh, just was really happy to find uh, such an attractive specimen and photograph it today. And now I've even been able to capture Pittsburgh again. And now we're going to let Pittsburgh go into the petunias. Petunias, you know you want, you know you like them. There you go. Bye, Pittsburgh. Thanks for the photo shoot. You have been fantastic. It's been quite a few days since I have brought a bug home from work, and the last bug that I brought home was that amazing jumping spider, which you just saw. And I've seen several really interesting bugs at work, but most of them I have already photographed. And today I was at work and I found another jumping spider. Now this might be the exact same species as the jumping spider that I just photographed. And I think the first jumping spider that we photographed, we called it Philadelphia. And I think I called it Philadelphia because that kind of is similar to the name of the genus of a jumping spider, or at least the first three letters. And then the second one, uh, we called it Pittsburgh. And this one we've decided to call Scranton. So here is Scranton, and I'm going to attempt to photograph Scranton now. He's in the box now, and he's pretty chill. And I've set up at, um... I need you to come down from there, though. Stay, come down here. Get on the flat. There you go. Now stay right there. I'm set up at, at ISO 160, 
and 1 60th of a second, F11, and 1 quarter power on the flash. Highest on 160, 1 60th of a second, F11, and 1 quarter on the flash kind of is the sweet spot that I found. I have the extension tubes on because these little guys are really tiny. Chill. If you would just face me and do that in focus, that would be lovely. Huh. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> Here are the photographs of Scranton, and as you can tell, Scranton is exactly the same species of spider as Pittsburgh was, the spider that I've always wanted to photograph, and you know, I went from I can't find a jumping spider to I find two jumping spiders in a row that are the exact same species and the species that kind of I've always wanted to photograph. And Scranton was really cool. He did a lot of the threat disp displays that you see jumping spiders do. He would never do it facing me, but I thought these shots of Scranton doing the little threat display out to the side. He looks like he's kind of like conducting an orchestra. And now it appears he is signaling that the University of Tennessee has scored a touchdown. Anyway, Scranton was awesome. It was really fantastic having an opportunity to photograph this beautiful jumping spider. Well, I made a number of photos of Scranton, and I'm pretty sure it is the same species as the previous spider in this same video. And now we will release Scranton into... There you go. Come on. Come on out, Scranton. It's funny, the way I catch these spiders. There you go. Go on, Scranton. On to the flower with you. But the way I catch these spiders is they're, I find them on a flat surface, and I just set this pill bottle right on top of them. Ah, there he goes. He's, he's down in there somewhere. And I just set the pill bottle right on top, like this and the spider will walk around in circles for a little while and then it will walk right up the side of the pill bottle and I put the perforated lid on and that is that. Another day, another jumping spider. Uh, the first two jumping spiders in this video appear to be the exact same species. This one is different, but it might be the same species, but it's just a male instead of a female or a female instead of a male, or I really don't know. Um, Maybe there are some jumping spider experts watching this video who, who can tell me what kind of jumping spiders these are and if they're males or females. Um, for some reason, we are continuing to name the jumping spiders cities in Pennsylvania, and so we've decided to name this little rascal Hershey. So this is Hershey, the jumping spider, and we are going to take a picture of it. It seems like it might be a little bit smaller than the first and second spiders in this video. Um, so I'm keeping the extension tubes on and I'm going to use the same settings as I did on the second spider, which is one one sixtieth of a second F11 ISO 160 and one quarter power on the Mikey MK320. I always set my camera back up to not do macro. And when I set it back up for macro, I forget and leave the camera on the fast drive mode. But now I've got it back where it's supposed to be. That's much better. Much more likely to have the, the flash fully uh, recharge. This guy, he's, he's not real fast, but he needs to just settle down for just a minute. And if you will, then I can get a couple of decent shots made of him. 
and then he'll be happily released. But right now he's not in the mood to settle down. And he's doing his arm waving. That's how I catch them. See, I just set the, the bottle on the spider and the spider will crawl up the wall and then I put the lid on it. That's how I catch them every time. It's a piece of cake. I believe this spider, this beautiful jumping spider that we have nicknamed Hershey, is probably the same species of spider that was the thumbnail from Bugs From Work 1, which was the first jumping spider that I brought inside to the product studio. And if you watch that video and look at the photographs in that video and compare them to this, which is episode four, it is night and day different. So uh, just practice at your macro photography and you will improve just as I have between episodes one and episodes four. Thanks for the photo shoot, Hershey. All right, uh, Hershey did a nice job as our photography subject. So time for Hershey to go to the petunias, which we've had a lot of rain today, so the petunias are not good in direct rain, but Hershey is free to go. Thanks, Hershey. I found another bug today at work and it is huge. The spiders I've been taking pictures of in this video are like three eighths of an inch long. Well, this is an Eastern eyed click beetle and it is about an inch and a half or maybe an inch and three quarters long. It is a huge and it's a click beetle, which they're the kind where you can touch them and they'll pop and uh, it has some eyes on it on the back of its front section and it's really beautiful uh, shades of gray and um, I've already taken it out of the uh, the pill bottle and put it in here and there he is. I've already made a few shots and usually I do uh, 1 1 60th f11 and ISO 160 and one quarter power on the flash. And I was overexposing a little bit, maybe because I'm further back because this bug is so big. And so I've dropped my ISO down to 100 and I've dropped the power on the flash down to one eighth instead of one quarter. Okay, so this is a click beetle and their defense mechanism is to, to uh, store up some energy and then pop their front piece and their back piece. And, and it's uh, pretty neat. So I'll try to pick him up and see him, see him doing his popping? That is what a click beetle does. And this is the biggest, I've seen, whoa. Oh. I've seen, whoa. Oh, Nikes. I've seen uh, other click beetles, but I've never seen one as big as the eyed click beetle. And now, Heather, show them the back. You can see the eyes, the fake eyes on its rear section there. That's where it gets its name. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna try to make some photos of this guy. This awesome, this beautiful, beautiful beetle. And uh, maybe they will turn out okay. I still got my focus point on its eye. But I'm hoping while I'm perpendicular to it that I'll have more of the yeah that's a lot better see it's basically all in focus kind of here are the photos of the amazing eastern eyed click beetle Heather doesn't think it's nearly as beautiful as the jumping spiders but I kind of like it and those jumping spiders are about the same size as this bug's head. Not the head with the fake eyes on it, but the head piece that's in front of that. This bug is absolutely huge by comparison to those other bugs. But just beautiful and interesting shades of gray and black. And uh, I imagine if it was on a tree, it would be fairly invisible looking. I actually found it on the stucco on the front porch at work and quickly captured it and took it home. Okay, I have the clicking bug here and I'm going to release it on the back porch. I'm holding it ever so gently, but it is clicking quite a bit. And now I'm just going to set it here on the railing. 
and say see you later friend thanks for the photo shoot you have been awesome bye bye okay that's four bugs that's usually how many i like to do in a video so i guess we will say thanks for watching if you like the content a thumbs up as always appreciated and we hope to see you again in the next one bye 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 bug <laughs>